there is this is a training um, for disciples. And in this training, under the Character Development Institute, we will look at several things that can affect the life of a Christian. Praise the Lord. I I have said over and over again that the greatest problem or enemy of the believer is not the devil, but ignorance. To be ignorant of scriptural things is dangerous. To be ignorant is dangerous. And that is why Paul says, in 1 Corinthians 12, I do not want you to be ignorant. I do not want you to be ignorant. And this training is not only for Christians. This workshop, this seminar is not only for Christians. It is for everybody because character is a general problem, whether in politics whether in military, whether in ministry, character or the lack of it is a big problem. And if you look at what God said in Hosea 4, 6, he says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Amen? But it didn't stop there. God said, because you have rejected knowledge, he says, I also will reject you from being priests for me. I will also reject you from being priests to me. So God is saying that I wouldn't use those that has not been trained in a very short, simple form. God is saying, I wouldn't use those that have not been trained. You know why? They are dangerous. So, I want you to take this training as important as you can. Because without the training, you will never lead in the things of God. It takes training to lead in the things of God. It takes training to lead. And then, When you have been trained, it will show in your character. When you have been trained, it will show in your character. Praise the Lord. Now, there are so many areas of training that sometimes we are lost. When we tell somebody, you are not trained, the person does not understand. Why am I not trained? And maybe the person knows how to present the table or the person knows how to serve or the person knows how to do one thing or the other. And when you tell the person you are not trained, the person gets angry and offended and said, with all my effort, with everything I do, how can you say I'm not trained? So training is deep. Amen? Training is deep. And if you are not trained, you are not trained. If you are not trained, you are not trained. So, <clears throat> if you look at the life of Paul, Apostle Paul, the Lord used him mightily because he was properly trained and disciplined and discipled. Amen. He was so well trained and discipled, he had a reference. If you look at Acts chapter 22, Acts chapter 22, praise the Lord. (coughs) Acts chapter 22 from verse 1. Now, Paul was trying to offer his defense (coughs) 
He says, I'm reading from the New Living Translation. He says, brothers and esteemed fathers. That's what Paul said. He says, brothers and what? Esteemed father. So one thing you will discover is that Paul had a lot of respect. Paul had what? A lot of respect. He had a lot of respect for the fathers and the faith. And even though they were persecuting him, he still respected them. He says, brethren and fathers, hear my defense. That is in um, Acts 22, New King James. But in New Living, he says, brothers and esteemed fathers, Paul said, listen to me as I offer my defense. Praise the Lord. The Bible said in verse 2, when they heard him speaking in their own language, the silence was even greater. Now, follow me what Paul says in verse 3. Then Paul said, I am a Jew, born in Tarsus, a city in Cilicia, and I was brought up and educated here in Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. I was brought up and educated here in Jerusalem. But you would think that he would call the institution where he was trained. You would think he would mention the school where he was trained. But Paul says something. He says, under Gamaliel. Is that in your Bible? In another translation, he said, at the feet. He said, at the feet of Gamaliel, taught according to the strictness of our fathers, our father's law. You know, he says he was taught according to the strictest or the strictness of our father's law. Praise the Lord. Talking about the law of Moses. But in the New King James, he said, I was carefully trained in our Jewish law and customs. I was carefully trained. Amen? Amen. Now he says, I was strictly trained in New King James. He didn't mention school, but he mentioned the father and the faith. He mentioned his teacher. Many people don't know they don't have teacher. You may have a pastor. It is you that will decide whether he will be your teacher or not. Why? When your pastor says things, you do it. That makes him your teacher. You wouldn't go against your teacher. No student goes against his teacher and pass the exam. No teacher. And that is why it's not just saying I go to a church. It's not saying I have a pastor. Until your pastor becomes your teacher, your life cannot change. There's a difference being a pastor there's a difference being your teacher. There's a difference being your mentor. Praise the Lord. Now, if you have a pastor that is your teacher and your mentor, you are blessed. Because there's not many pastors that can be a teacher. And there's not many teachers that can be a mentor. But if you get blessed to get a pastor and a teacher and a mentor wrapped up all in one, you have a gold mine. Praise the Lord. Because what will happen to your life, what others will spend time looking for, you will find in one. Jesus fulfilled all that. Jesus was a pastor. He was a teacher. He was a mentor. Praise the Lord. And so, even if your pastor does not work in the gift of miracles, and healings, and faith, and all that, and he's able to teach you. He's able to mentor you. He's able to pastor you. You will still be a success. You will still be a success. If you read the Acts of the Apostles carefully, you will observe that Peter preached to multitude that got believed, that became believers, right? Take this seminar, very important. Take it very seriously because it will change your life. It will change your life. Take this seminar. Just because it's free does not mean you act freely. Confine yourself to the strictest discipline. 
in this seminar, you will be a different kind of person. And you begin to walk in the spirit like never before. And you begin to manifest the gift of the spirit like never before. And you will have friends like never before. Because sometimes your character chases people away from you. Your lawlessness drives people away from you. And you wouldn't know it. Your lawlessness will drive away the spirit away from you. Because the Bible said that every lawlessness is sin. Every lawlessness is what? Sin. And so we need to be careful to take, to take these meetings as deep as we can. As deep as we can. Amen. If you go back to the Acts of the Apostles and you notice that Peter preached to more multitudes, like, unlike Apostle Paul. Did you observe? Peter preached to multitudes. Multitudes. But Paul, <laughs> Paul raised, Paul raised disciples that were able to take charge of churches. Peter got multitude born again. But Paul raised, raised Timothy. He raised Titus. He raised Epaphroditus. He raised many co-laborers. Are you hearing me? And so they were able to reproduce themselves. They were able to manifest themselves in ministry. Amen. Amen. So what does that tell us? It tells us that if you will allow this seminar to impact you, you can be in charge of a church one day. God can make you a minister one day. That's what it tells you. Peter preached to multitudes, no doubt. They got born again, no doubt. They were big, no doubt. But you will record the names of the disciples that Paul raised in the New Testament more than those that Peter raised. Paul was able to reproduce himself many times. Peter did not achieve that. Why? Paul was a pastor. Paul was a teacher. Paul was a mentor. He fulfilled all those things. Now, when Paul got to Ephesus, if you read Acts chapter 19, just to give you an example, the kind of miracle uh, ministry that Paul had. Amen. When he went to Ephesus to preach the gospel, there was something that happened. There was a problem in Ephesus. If we read from verse 8, I'm not going to go through all that because the, the, this seminar focuses on training you in a way that God can use you. And it is under the CDI, training you in a way and manner that God can use you. Praise the Lord. So we're not going to read a lot of scriptures, but I encourage you. For instance, when I said, let's read Acts chapter 19 from verse 8. I encourage you, after this session, before the next session, read the entire Acts chapter 19. So that you can develop your spirit, you can be built up, you can have the full story. Praise the Lord. In verse 8 of Acts 19, the Bible said, And he went into the synagogue and spoke boldly for three months, reasoning and persuading concerning the things of the kingdom of God. Verse 9 is something that we should take very seriously. He said, But when some were hardened, some of them were hardened and did not believe. Not only were they had them, but they did not believe the message. They resisted the message. They opposed the message of Paul. Are you hearing me? Very often, when we encounter difficulties or opposition because of our message, we, we tend to think that, you know, maybe God has not called us. Maybe we are doing the wrong thing. But we need to know that if you look from the eyes of the apostles, those that preached and taught the truth suffered consequences. Amen. Amen. Those from the acts of the apostles, those that taught the truth of the gospel, starting from our Lord Jesus Christ, they suffered consequences. They were beaten, 
They were persecuted. They were killed. They were in prison. They were flogged. I, I pray you, don't let anything. Don't let your education take you away from God. Don't let the job take you away. Don't let your husband, don't let your wife take you away. Don't let the children. Ah, some people worship their children that God gave to them. They worship them. They adore their children. Some people adore their husband. Some people adore their wife. Listen, love your children, love your family, but love God more because at the end of the day, their destiny is in the hand of God. Amen. You can give them good education does not mean that they, no, it does not mean that they will be able to make it. But God can make them make it. Praise the Lord. And so when the Bible said, love God, love God, love God, like Moses said, he said that it may be well with you. The reason why many struggle to love the Lord is because you've not seen the wonders of God. You've not seen the wonders of God. If you will experience, if you will experience one encounter of the Lord, if you will get God to act for you just one time, one time, one time, it will shock you. If you come to a place where you move God into action on your behalf, just in one circumstances, you will know that truly God is a wonder-working God. You have not dared God. That's the problem. You have not dared Jehovah. Where you said, I don't care. Esther said, if I perish, I perish, but I'm going forward. The three Hebrew children said, even though they throw us into the fire, we will not bow before their God. You have not come to that place. Daniel said, let them throw me into the lion den. I will stand for Jehovah. You have not come to that point. That's where the problem is. And that's why Moses is saying to them, he said, listen, listen. Love the Lord your God with all your heart. He said, your destiny is in loving God. Your future, your prosperity, your increase is in how you love the Lord. You know why we pray so long? Because we are trying first to please God with all our lawlessness. And so we pray long, we fast long. Any child that is obedient to the father, to the mother, doesn't need to ask much. Before even he asks, it is given. True or false? Except the wicked parents. No, that is the truth. That is the truth. It is only our generation that does not have the gospel with persecution. And so when you are being persecuted because of the gospel, they think that something is wrong with you. But the gospel came to us with persecution. That is the truth. The way of life is filled with persecution. The way of life is, comes with mocking. People will mock you. People will despise you. The way of life comes with all manner of humiliations. And because we have not been trained into it, we've not been trained knowing it, when it happens, we are not able to manage it. We are not able to hold it. You know why? Because we have been taught a message of prosperity and then a message of confession and possession and a message of you just want to be blessed. You want, just want to be blessed. And then we forget the fine scriptures that Jesus said that if they persecute me, they will persecute you. That's what Jesus said. Amen. And Jesus said, if they call me names, they will also call you names. We don't read that scripture. People don't want to hear it. They want to hear just the good news. But persecution is still part of the good news. Praise the Lord. So, when you look at the scriptures, the Bible said that they were hardened. Amen. Paul was trying to minister to them. The Bible said, but, but when some were hardened and did not believe, but spoke evil of the way, they spoke evil about the church before the multitude. They didn't just speak evil about Paul. They spoke evil about Christian faith because then the church was called the way. Remember what Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. So they now called the church the way. Now, 
the multitude that listened to Paul did not only speak evil about the message of Paul, they spoke evil about the entire body of Christ and then trying to win the multitude. Praise the Lord. What did he do? Paul departed from them and withdrew his, the disciples. He withdrew his disciples, reasoning daily in the school of Tynan, Tynanos. Amen? And this continued for two years, so that all who dwelt in Asia heard the word of God, the word of the Lord Jesus, both Jews and Greeks. This is very important. Amen? Amen. Paul tried to teach in the synagogue, there was opposition, there was rebellion, there was resistance to his message, there was resistance to the gospel. The Bible said he withdrew, he departed. But before he did that, what did he do? He looked among the multitude. He picked those that received his message, those that received his word. If you read the entire scripture, the Bible said there were 12. When he got those people, what did Paul do? Paul separated them from the multitude. He didn't teach them in the synagogue anymore. And that is why you should take this seminar very seriously. Paul separated them from the multitude, separated them from the synagogue. What did he do? He went to a private school. Is that not your Bible? Come on. Verse 9. And we drew the disciples, reasoning daily in the school of Tyrannus, and this continued for how many years? Three years. Paul spent time pouring himself in themselves. Pouring himself in themselves. Pouring himself in themselves. So what he failed to do in the synagogue, he ended up doing in the whole Asia, in the whole continent. And that is why the same Paul says in Romans chapter 8, for we know all things work together. All things including persecution, including challenges. God is able. You see, the reason why God is unlimited is that God can reverse any situation. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I said the reason why God is unlimited is because he can reverse any situation. He can make it profit you, make it profit his kingdom. But what God needs is faith from your own side. Amen. Amen. God needs faith from our own side to trust him that in this trouble, I will end well. In this challenge, I will end well. Praise the Lord. When that is lacking, that is when we open the door for the enemy. In every situation, there is an opportunity incorporated. In every situation, there is a blessing incorporated. It is your attitude. If you approach every challenge with fear, you will be swallowed or you will end up in it. If you approach every situation by faith, Having been well trained, you will make progress. You will profit out of it. There is no disadvantageous situation for a child of God. I will say it again. There is no disadvantageous situation for a child of God. Every situation, every challenge, it carries opportunity for a breakthrough, opportunity for a miracle. So they wouldn't allow Paul to teach in the synagogue and they poisoned the mind of the people. And the Bible said Paul withdrew. He left the synagogue for them. He left the synagogue for them. He took his disciples to do what I'm doing with you here. The Bible said he began to teach them daily. He began to build them up daily. He began to feed them daily. And then at the end of the day, what they didn't want to happen in the synagogue happened in the whole continent of Asia. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. You can never be disadvantaged as a, a Christian. Don't dwell upon disadvantages. The training that Paul gave to those disciples made all the difference. Made all the difference. Praise the Lord. Made all the difference. The training. And I want to believe that the training also you all will receive will make all the difference in your life. Amen. But, but you need to have an attitude of a student, eager to learn, eager to grow. If you set your mind correctly, in the next six months, you will be somewhere with God. 
Remember what God said. Anybody that rejects knowledge, I will also reject from being priest unto me. That's what God said. If you reject knowledge, God said, I will also reject you. You will not be my priest. I will not use you. And Paul said, I do not want you. I would rather say that the Holy Spirit speaking to us through Paul said, don't be ignorant about spiritual things. Don't be ignorant about the laws of the spirit. Don't be ignorant. You see, the ignorance of a Christian concerning spiritual things cannot be excused. You know why? We have what I would call a mandate. We have the word. And Jesus has told us, the Holy Spirit has told us, Peter told us, Paul told us, we should read the word of God. We should study the word of God. Praise the Lord. God told Joshua, he said, dwell upon the word, meditate upon the word day and night. Day and night. And you know it. You've been told. If you don't practice it, then you are weak. Then you are vulnerable. But God said, practice. Spend time. Meditate upon the word. God does not just tell us to read the word. God says we should dwell in it. He said, let the word of God, let the word of Christ dwell richly in in us. Praise the Lord. As we do this training, and you listen to it carefully, there is no way your life will not change. Amen? Amen? There is no way. A lot of the things you act, if only you know that it is contrary to the word of God. It will change you. Let me, let me just give one example because we are going to treat that as a subject on itself. Let's talk about respecting your seniors. Amen. Respecting your seniors. <laughs> Many of you don't know how important it is in the word of God. Even by nature, tradition, Tradition, especially in African continent, in Asia also, you should respect those that senior you, isn't it? Yes. If we look at the story of um, um, Esau and Jacob, who was a senior? Esau. Esau. By how many years did he senior Jacob? This will shock some of you. By how many years did he senior Jacob? All this, uh, the older one, the older one, the older one. How many? If uh, Jacob want to ask, Jacob will say, by the way, how many years did you used to senior me? 